Morning, Maggie. Good morning, Bert. Do you want some coffee? Yes, thank you. How are you, Sam? Fine, Bert. You? Wouldn't be better. Mm -hmm. Suppose you're happy about the verdict our coroner arrived at? It was the only possible one. Eh, maybe you're right. But I don't think so. Bert, nobody had anything to do with Bill Malloy's death. Oh, yes. Someone had something to do with it. And that someone is standing right there. Burke Devlin. I'm saying that Burke Devlin is responsible for Mr. Malloy being dead. Now, wait a minute. Oh, I don't say you drowned him. But if you hadn't come back to Collinsport, Mr. Malloy would still be alive. If you come back to Collinsport and stirring up all that mess about an accident 10 years ago got Mr. Malloy so upset he didn't know if he was coming or going. He was my friend. Well, that's a fine friend. Come to town and do everything you can to throw doubt and suspicion on everyone. It was you caused Mr. Malloy to have that accident and drown. And in your heart, you know it. That's not true. Burke didn't have anything to do with it. Now, wait a minute, Davy. Wait a minute. She doesn't know what she's talking about. Okay, Dave, all right. I appreciate your concern. Now, come on. I want to talk to you a minute. Out here. Oh. All right, what are you doing here, anyway? She doesn't know what she's talking about. She didn't have anything to do with it. I know that. I know that, and I'm glad you took up for me in there. Now, tell me. What are you doing here? I came, was looking for you, and I was looking for you. Well, well what do you want to talk about, Davy? There's, there's something wrong. She doesn't know what she's talking about. I'm sick, the way everybody's blaming you for everything. That's just the way they treat me, too. Well, we'll just have to take it, Davy, okay? I'd like to kill them all. Oh, now, now, come on. That would be a pretty drastic solution, don't you think? Now, please, tell me, why did you come into town? You think I maybe? Talk to you. Maybe we'd privately. better privately. Maybe we'd better go upstairs in my room if it's private, okay? That's what I meant. Okay. Mrs. Johnson, did you really mean that when you said that Burke was responsible for Bill Malloy's death? Well, not directly, but until Burke Devlin came to town, Mr. Malloy was a different man. Until Burke showed on the scene and began digging into all that past history. But Bill Malloy wasn't involved in any of that. It distressed Mrs. Stoddard, and that was enough to make Mr. Malloy involved. And he was determined to stop Burke. And you think that Burke stopped him? Well, no, I mean to say not directly. We have to accept the coroner's verdict on that. But I know that Mr. Malloy knew that shortcut by lookout point as well as he knew the back of his hand. If his mind hadn't been so distracted by Burke Devlin, he would never have lost his footing, the way they say. Maybe. Okay, now. Now. What's on your mind? Is it true? Is it true you want to take Collingwood and everything away from my Aunt Elizabeth? Who on earth told you that? That's what she said. She said that you wanted to get it in any way you could. And I mustn't see you again. Did she say I offered to buy it? Did she say that, Davy? All she said was I... Couldn't ever see you again, because you wanted to get it in any way you could. Ah, uh, Davy. Come here, come here, sit down with me, will you? You remember the last time you were here? Huh? Well, you suggested that I buy it then, remember? So that we could have fun up there, all right? Oh. Remember? And she thinks you were doing it just to be mean. I couldn't be mean to you, my friend. Just the way I couldn't be mean to you. Exactly. They all say I can't have divided loyalties. Who is they all? Oh, Aunt Elizabeth, Matthew. It's a hard decision. I'm sure it is. If 
But I know you'll come up with the right answer. You know, Miss Winters has been teaching me about the Civil War, and they had divided loyalties then. Yes, they did. Sometimes brother was fighting against brother and friend against friend. That's very true. Well, that's the kind of decision I have to make. It's like you were General Grant and Aunt Elizabeth was General Lee. Well, I'm flattered if she is. That's just it. They were both great, but one of them had to lose. And one of them had to win. I don't want either of you to win because I don't want either of you to lose. Well, Davy, what do you say that we have a truce, huh? Does that mean no more fighting? That's right, no more fighting. You don't fight me and I don't fight you. But we weren't fighting. Say, that's right. Well, then you and I don't need a truce, do we? No, we don't. What about General Grant and General Lee? Well, I guess we'll just have to rewrite history so nobody loses. Wouldn't that be great? Yeah. Wouldn't it, though? I expect when I get home, if they find out I've been here, they'll beat me. I hope not. I expect they will. They do it all the time. It'll be even worse if they hire that old Mrs. Johnson to be my jailer. Mrs. Johnson, she's a good old soul, Davy. Oh, well, it doesn't matter anyway. Davy, uh, come here a minute. Come in, come in. I want to talk to you about her, about Mrs. Johnson. So you really shouldn't resent what you heard Mrs. Johnson saying in the restaurant. She didn't mean a word of it. It sure sounded like she did. She's very upset, David, about Mr. Malloy. I liked him too, but I don't go around blaming people for things they never did. Well, I guess she acts that way because, well, suddenly she's got nothing to care about in this world. Nothing to look forward to. But maybe she has. My Aunt Elizabeth was thinking about hiring her as a housekeeper. Was she? Yeah. And I thought it was just going to be one more person to watch me. You see, Davy? You don't think things through, you know? Now, that's a big house. Your Aunt Elizabeth needs someone else to take care of it, not to watch you. I guess I was all wrong about her. Maybe I should apologize. It takes a man to admit that he's been wrong. Carolyn apologized to me for something yesterday. Only she wasn't wrong. She was right. She said I stole something of yours, but I didn't really steal it. I just borrowed it to look at. And what was that? That picture of you. Oh, that picture. Now, how could you have stolen that one? It's been here all the time. Huh? Yeah, it's it. Well, it wouldn't be stealing it because, well, it belongs to you anyway. I meant for you to have it. You did? Oh, sure, that's why I put it down there, for you to take it. Can I take it? Listen, you don't have to ask for something when it's already yours. <laughs> Got it? Gee, I'm glad I came to see you. So am I, Davy. So am I. Let's go. <laughs> You're absolutely right, Sam. I think it's Burke Devlin's nature to pry around and upset people. Maybe Burke was upset, too. Well, we'll have to learn to forget. Live and let live. That's exactly what I say. I'd like another piece of this toast. Hey, you like my cooking. Uh, but I'll have it over at this table here. I'm just not built for these stools. <laughs> Maggie, I want you to watch your manners with her. She's gone through a lot lately. Okay, Pop. I guess I was a little harsh on her. She's all right. Mm. Oh. I have to make a phone call. Who are you going to... I'm sorry I said that, Pop. Mrs. Johnson, I want to apologize for the way I acted. Well, that's perfectly all right, David. I wish you accept in the spirit in which it was tender. I do. And uh, perhaps I was harsh about uh, Mr. Devlin. 
You mean you apologize? I suppose so. Burke, she apologized to you. Well, that's fine. about here. Carolyn offered me the pen and then left. And then later she came back by the fireplace here. And I offered her the pen and she refused. in my pocket. Maybe I changed my jacket. No. No, I didn't. Well, you do move about silently, don't you? Perhaps I should wear wooden shoes. I suppose you wonder what I was doing. Not at all. I know what you were doing. Just what do you think I was doing? You were practicing a new dance step. Oh. Well, unfortunately not. I, um, I was trying to remember something, but um, it wasn't very important. Are you uh, looking for something? Not something, someone. I can't find David anywhere. He seems to have vanished into thin air. Well, not exactly. Do you know where he is? But I received a call that he was at the Collinsport Inn with Burke Devlin. Well, perhaps I should go and get him. No, don't bother. By the time I got there, he had already left alone, and I didn't see him on the road as I drove home. Well, he's probably gone to his favorite haunt, the old house. Mm, just the sort of hideout that my son would choose. He'll probably come home when he gets hungry. Oh, Vicky, um, have you heard any more about um, my sister hiring Mrs. Johnson to work here? As far as I know, no more has been done about it. Oh, I hope so. I, um, I hope that um, you can dissuade her from bringing her on here because I dislike having strangers around the house. Well, not so very long ago, I was a stranger myself. Well, but you see, that's quite different. <laughs> you you uh, have come from out of town without any local connections. If we bring... Um, Mrs. Johnson here, I'm sure she will want to have all of her friends coming here, and I think the place will be flooded with local curiosity seekers. I'm not too keen on the idea of having Mrs. Johnson hovering about. Roger, will you stop interfering with the running of my house? It's, the responsibility is mine. But really, Liz... Will you excuse me? I have something to do. Of course. No, Roger. I know Collinwood belongs to you, my dear sister, but since David and I are living here, it seems like we could be consulted before you bring strangers in off the street. Mrs. Johnson can hardly be considered a stranger. She was Bill Malloy's housekeeper. She will be a constant reminder of Bill Malloy's death. Roger, you're being ridiculous. I don't want to think of the way he died. He was practically brought in on our very doorstep. I... Roger... I want to spend less time on the house and more with other things. For instance, David, since you never have any time to devote to your own son. Now, what's Vicky for? That's her job. She's his tutor, not a constant companion. I wanted to spend more time with Carolyn. I see. All right, then. If you are satisfied, and if Carolyn's satisfied, and David is satisfied, and Vicky is satisfied, then I suppose I have nothing to complain about. No, you haven't. Well, since you're so concerned about... My son's choice of companions. How is it that he's gotten so chummy with Burke Devlin?
anybody home? Come on in. Vicki, I have a problem. Ignore it and it'll go away. That's my problem. It already isn't there. I mean, what should I do about Joe? Just because I broke that date with him, he hasn't even called me. Oh, it's early still. And no, but I usually hear from him. Well, why don't you break down and call him? Then he'll think I'm the one in the wrong. Aren't you? Of course, but I don't want him to know that. Well, then what are you going to do? I guess I'll call him. I can always say it was your idea. I have no idea why David was in town. All I do know is that he was having something to eat with Burke Devlin at the Collins Port Inn. Mrs. Johnson was there, too. Both of them? Well, apparently not. Well, I'll certainly speak to David about it. Well, I wish you would. All right, Joe. That's marvelous. Will you get her as soon as you can? Bye-bye. <laughs> well... Nice to see one happy face around here. I am happy. Good. Kitten, are you positive that you gave Burke's fountain pen back to me? Of course. Well, what makes you so positive? Because it was the night Mr. Malloy died. You don't think I'd forget a thing like that, do you? No, I suppose not. And then later, you told me you went right from here to the office. So if you haven't found the pen anywhere around the house, you must have lost it on the way. Hmm? Yes, I could have. I did exactly what you said I should do. And Joe pretended as though that argument were all his fault, not mine. Anyway, he's coming right up here. Have you got a scarf I could wear with this? I think so. Oh, look at my hair. What should I do with it? Brush it. Thanks. Vicki, have you seen David? Mr. Collins said that he was in town. He's probably back by now. Did he tell you he was with Burke Devlin? Yes, he did. That was... Can't continue. We've got to get some help here. How about Mrs. Johnson? Oh, I don't know, Carolyn. Oh, why don't you call her? It'd be such a nice thing to do for Mr. Malloy. Yes, I suppose it would. That sounds like Joe. Vicky, would you be a lamb and run downstairs and let him in? Sure. Thank you. Carolyn, you were with David the other day in Burke's hotel room. Yes. Well, what was Burke's attitude towards David? I don't know. I think he just sort of tolerates him. And what is David's attitude towards Burke? He seems to like him very much. David says he's his friend. Is my hair all right? Oh, I wish everything in this house was as all right as your hair. Hi, Vicki. Carolyn will be down in a minute. Oh, thanks. Listen, uh, Vicki, does, does Carolyn know I, I saw you last night? Not as far as I know. Well, I mean, does she know that you saw me? I mean, you know, my being at the Blue Whale? Not for me, she doesn't. Good. You know, she might not understand about me dancing with Maggie there. Well, I haven't said anything to her, and I promise you I won't. Vicki, you know, if I didn't happen to be in love with Carolyn, I think I'd be in love with you. Hello, Joe. Oh, hi, Mrs. Stoddard. I'm glad to see you. Did you go into the drawing room? I want to talk to you. Oh, sure. I'll tell Carolyn she needn't hurry. Thanks. <laughs> 